So here we have a slightly more complex um, vector problem compared to the previous one. Again, we're using tension on a wire rope to slide a load against friction. Uh, and we'll assume that the weight of the load is uh, 10,000 pounds, just like we did last time. And we're going to say that mu equals two-thirds. Remember that mu is the coefficient of friction. It's basically a dimensionless unit. Well, the way you figure out what it's going to take to make this load slide is you multiply the weight times the coefficient of friction. So two-thirds of 10,000 pounds is 6,667 pounds. Now, if you look at point D, point D is looking at basically how much tension is present in this hook here, and it's uh, equal to the amount of um, force it's going to take to slide this, this load here. So 6,000 667 pounds. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated because we have a um, pulley here. Basically, these two wire ropes are under equal tension. So a pulley is just something that passes wire rope uh, with undiminished tension, changes the direction. So uh, maybe we don't know what B and C are, but I know something. I know that the tension in C is equal to the tension in B. Well, what do we know? So we know B equals C. And we know that B plus C has to equal 6,667 pounds. Well, now it's just a matter of substitution. If B is equal to C, then I can just, uh, in place of C, put an, another B. So I could say B plus B equals 6,667 pounds, or 2B equals 6,667 pounds. So basically, B is going to equal that number, that 6,667, divided by 2. So 6,667 divided by 2. We'll call that 3,334 pounds. And again, by definition, B and C are equal, so each of these, oops, 3,334 pounds, 3,334 pounds. Now, uh, an interesting question is, what is the tension at point A? Well, you'll notice that this wire rope is passed around a pulley, and again, uh, pulleys, shivs, redirect the wire rope with theoretically no uh, uh, change in force. Now, you know, in the perfect world or an exact world, that's probably not totally true. There's some friction associated with this pulley, but for the purpose, for the purposes of um, statics, those forces are so small compared to the actual forces in the wire rope that we can just ignore them. Well, if uh, that under that uh, rule, then the tension in wire rope B has to be equivalent to the tension in wire rope A. So this has just got to be 3,000. 334 pounds, just like it is everywhere else in the system. Now, uh, if we look at point, uh, this is a little bit more complicated problem here with what's happening with this anchor. Point E, uh, if we were to draw it out with vectors, we have a force to the left of 3,334 pounds, and we have a force down 3,334 pounds. So how do we solve this problem? Again, we slide the vectors head to tail. So I'll redraw this with my left right vector in its original location, and I will slide my vertical vector. And the resultant of these two vectors, when they're composed, is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So uh, again, we're just looking for basically the length of this side. I'll call that length L. Well, what's length L equal to? It's equal to this length squared plus this length squared, and then taking the square root of that sum. So 3,334 squared plus 3,334 squared equals L squared. How do I get to just L? Simply take the square root of both sides. So when I take the square root of both sides, Basically, that just cancels the exponents. Okay, so let's uh, run the numbers here. 
And again, this is the kind of thing you want to use a calculator or a spreadsheet for. There's no sense in crunching these numbers longhand. Okay, so a really huge number. Uh, and you'll notice these two numbers are the same, so I'm just going to multiply that by 2. Okay, so that is the square of the length of side L. So how do we get the length of side L? We just simply take the square root. So I'm going to raise this to the 1 half power. That's equivalent to taking the square root. And we see that the force is 4,715 pounds. Now let's think about if that's reasonable. Uh, would it make sense if we're pulling to the left with 3,334 pounds and down with 3,334 pounds that we would get a downward and leftward force of 4,715 pounds? Well, it probably does make some sense. Uh, you know, for one thing, we know that if both of these were pulling straight left, it would be the exact sum of these two, right? It'd be 3,334 times 2. So it'd be, if both of these uh, vectors are straight to the left, it'd be that 6,667. On the other hand, if they were pulling exactly opposite of each other, they would cancel out and it would be 0. So the answer has to be somewhere between 0 and 6,667. So uh, we're, the number is reasonable. And from experience, I can just tell you that that's the amount of tension actually kind of in the body of the um, uh, snatch block here. So. 4,715 pounds. Now, uh, that's acting in this kind of southwesterly direction. But remember that this um, anchor here is also experiencing a pull downward by the tension on this wire rope, wire rope C, of 3,334 pounds. So we have to further compose vectors. So let's take a look at that. So I've got this vector, which is 4,715 pounds, and then I have this vector, which is 3,334, oops, 34 pounds. So how do I compose those? It's the same process. I'm going to slide them head to tail. And now what I'm looking for is the length of this resultant. Well, this is not such an easy problem to solve because we don't have a 90 degree angle here anymore. However, we can use uh, law of sines to sort this out. So let's think about what is the angle, what is this included angle here? Well, um, because uh, there's a unique property of this triangle, this is an isosceles triangle, which means that this length is equal to this length. And under those circumstances, when this largest angle is 90 degrees, uh, I know that this angle here has got to be 45. So uh, 45 degrees um, would get you from horizontal to here, but we're going from vertical to here. So it's 90 plus 45. That angle's got to be 135 degrees. So this problem um, gets complex because these other two remaining angles are difficult to figure. So you'd have to use law of cosines. So here's an alternative approach that will make this simpler. I'm going to go back to my original diagram. And these two lines represented uh, line A and line B. And to this original diagram, I'm going to add line C so that my original vector diagram will now look as follows. 3,334 to the left. 
3,334 from line B, 3,334 from line C. Well, that's basically could be redrawn uh, one more iteration simpler, 3,334 to the left, 6,667 pounds down. Okay, now the process is exactly the same. We slide these head to tail. And the resultant is the hypotenuse of this triangle. And so you get 3,334 squared plus 6,667 squared equals the length of that hypotenuse squared. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so that equals the square of length L. Again, we'll take the square root by raising to the one-half power. And the force developed across those three lines is 7,454 pounds. And again, you ask, is this reasonable? Well, yes, it is reasonable because now we've got, we're looking at a scenario where we've got um, three lines pulling instead of two. So basically at this hook, the tension is 7,454 pounds. And the last part of this is what does the anchor need to weigh? Well, the anchor uh, is going to have that same coefficient of friction, two-thirds. So the anchor weight, I'll abbreviate this as uh, W sub A, equals 7,000 454 pounds divided by that two-thirds. Well, that's not very pretty, but remember that dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So three-halves is the reciprocal of two-thirds, which is 1.5. So if we just do 1.5 times 7,454 pounds, we'll find out what that anchor needs to weigh. So we're just going to multiply that number times 1.5. And it needs to weigh about 11,181 pounds. So you can see that um, this was a little bit more complicated, but um, you can solve just about any problem of this variety. It's just a matter of exercising enough ingenuity in how you set the problem up. Uh, and some of these can be quite challenging, but if you um, just kind of think about what you know, what's given in the problem, and how you can manipulate the numbers using these basic trigonometric properties, uh, you can sort out quite a number of things.